Hello everyone, uh, today I will be making another little project with the ESP32. Now, uh, this video has uh, not been sponsored or, you know, requested by um, Fichain Electronics who sent me this one. And they also sent me uh, this Arduino. Um, but they didn't request this, they didn't sponsor me, right? They, they don't pay me, right? It's, I'm making this because, um, you know, I wanted uh, to make an actual project with this, you know. Because in the earlier video, I just made a PC turn on and off device, which, you know, that's funny, but that's that's nothing real, like a real big project, was just to show you. Um, this project can actually be done with either an Arduino, which you can buy from their side, or uh, this one, and, well, uh, I'm going to leave the links to their uh, Amazon stores uh, in the description, UK, US, um, because, well, uh, I'm really quite happy that uh, they sent me these because, you know, I, I'm grateful, you know, um, and I just want to give them a little bit more credit than most YouTubers actually do, but it's not sponsored or anything. So, that out of the way, uh, I, you see this little breadboard? I'm just going to make it on a breadboard and make it a bit, hmm, you know, not quite permanent yet. Uh, because I want to use this one again, uh, because I only have one of these. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to insert it into the breadboard if I don't do it wrong. There we go. This one in. There we go. Okay, so uh, the idea is to make a fume extractor. So I have a bit of a plastic housing here, which is where I will be making it into. This can just uh, go in here and the fan can go here, so that's gonna be fine. And the idea was to have the stop open with like um, some filter on it. Uh, and well, that should be fine. Um, and this is gonna be a smart uh, fume extractor, as you probably read in the title. You will be able to control it with your phone and by uh, distance, which is pretty cool, I think, because then it won't be on all the time and you won't have to switch it on and off. You can just leave it plugged in for longer periods of time and just come in close, solder, and you know, you don't inhale the fumes. So let's get going. As you can see, I've got the fan over here, which is a 12 volt fan out of a, a, probably an old power supply, looking at the goop over here. Um, but, well, it works. Um, it just has two leads. So, yeah, that's gonna be fine. We can drive it with a transistor. Uh, and the transistor can be driven with this ESP32 through a, a resistor. Don't get them mixed up. And this is the distance sensor thingy uh, that will measure the distance. And I will use about like 20 centimeters. And when you get close to it, you can solder, which uh, it will probably be pointing a bit like this then. So you have the fan over here. So, you know, this is just some rough ideas to put into the enclosure. All right, so this totally doesn't look like anything special. It looks like a pretty nasty uh, piece of plastic, but we can put this in here and I'm gonna use a lot of breadboards today. Uh, yeah, so we will have to cut a hole over here, which will be good enough. Uh, it will be roughly good, but this, is not quite good yet or maybe what a better idea is to put this in the center and have the fan above that yeah that's a better idea all right so that's how we figure out what we're gonna do and there's something in there that's not good no no metal in there okay that's it we're gonna put it in the middle and that's basically how i figure out my ideas let's get going as you can see i will be using an uh, exacto knife and i'll just mark the area lightly gonna Carve a bit into it. Uh, yeah, that's visible to me, not to you. So, whoops, I just bumped something. Uh, Alright, so we take that out and I will cut the hole, which I will do off camera because otherwise this will be a very boring and long cutting holes video. That's, that's boring. Alright, so this is what it looks like right now. I can get uh, this little center in there, if I don't kill it. And it looks somewhat like this, which still isn't very convincing maybe, but... Uh, well, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, all we have to do is wire it up and we're done. Yeah, let's do that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just placing in the components and I am kind of trying to see how it all should go. So uh, the code will be downloadable in the description. Um, 
if I can get it there. And in the code you can see uh, what pin goes to where. And then, well, you can just look that up on the pinout or you can look on your board, whatever. And you can get that to work. So, I'm just going to wire this up in my room. I'm going to film it. Uh, and then we will continue on with this uh, housing. <laughs> guys I think this is it it is really quite simple um, and you can even uh, add an additional LED which I have in the code which has a pin dedicated to it but I'm not gonna bother doing that um, and well as you can see this is it so here we have this which can go really anywhere because of the long wires uh, here we plug in the 12 volts for the fan which goes through the transistor uh, so in this plus rail I will plug in the fan positive and in the transistor we plug in the negative. So yeah, so this will be the distance sensor and we will have Wi-Fi. Um, but I have one problem, I don't have Wi-Fi in my garage so I won't be able to really show you what it does in my garage. Maybe I can get soldering in here, I don't know, uh, uh, I guess I'll just see. <laughs> But let's go back to the garage and assemble it. So here it is. Um, I cut a little hole in the back for the wires because it was uh, plus 12 volts and we need uh, maybe this one. Unless you want to connect like the 12 volts through a leg regulator. Then you would only need uh, one 12 volt in a power input. But, but I don't feel um, quite comfortable doing that yet because it's a 3.3 volt device and I'm quite new to it. So I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna risk it. Uh, so, quick note of course, you want this all... Oh, there's solid in there. So, quick note, you want this to be quite airtight with some hot glue around the edges and stuff. But since I'm going to want to pull this apart, uh, I'm not gonna do anything like I would do when I would uh, have this as a permanent thing. But I want to use this one again. Uh, but you can use, uh, which I would do on the top here, you can use carbon filter or something that they use in fish tanks. You can make a little tunnel. You can do all, uh, all kinds of stuff. But we, are, I'm just going to plug in the fan. The fan should go with positive to the positive rail over here. doesn't really matter where we plug it in. And negative to the collector of the transistor. Then you have the emitter of the transistor going to ground and the base of the transistor uh, being connected which I see I forgot to connect I completely looked over it because the resistor was already up that's a bit foolish of me but that's okay I can fix that I need to test this in my room anyway so let's go to my room again alright guys quick note sorry for the audio but um, the distance sensor uses ultrasonic sound which we can't hear as humans but the camera was pointed directly at it, which meant that parts of the tripod and the phone, which I used to film with, uh, were vibrating um, at, of course, a different uh, frequency, but they were vibrating because of the ultrasonic sensor, and that's what you're hearing through the audio, which is it's pretty cool, but I'm sorry if it's annoying to you. It sounds kind of like a mosquito. But um, that is actually the distance sensor using its, you know, uh, ultrasonic sound, which... We can't hear, but that's how it you you know that's how it works. Uh, that that way it uses the reflection uh, of the sound to calculate the distance, which is pretty cool. But you know it, you know the, I accidentally point my camera directly at it. Sorry, guys. All right, guys. I'm just gonna show you. It is connected to power. That's all. Um, there's no computer or anything. Just so you can see, it's Wi-Fi actually. Um, so let's say I'm working over here. You know, see. It turns on. That's really cool. So, let's say I'm just working over here on my electronics. You know, I'm just uh, soldering like this. I don't have a soldering iron over here because I don't want it in my, you know, in my bedroom. But I'm just uh, soldering like this. You know, I just have my solder soldering. Move out of the way. It turns off. So it's not, you know, blowing constantly. It's, you know, it's quite nice. You don't have to turn it on and off manually. I, th I think it's pretty cool. But let's say I don't want this to turn on when I'm here, you know, I'm just working, I don't want this to turn on. But I don't want to turn off the power to it either, so what do we do? We go to the web server it has created. So as you can see, it has ESP control, 
which is a nice little library I found. Uh, so yes, it does take a while to start up. That is normal. It is supposed to um, put some files, you know, it has to put some files onto your um, ESP32, even though it has already been programmed, which it has to do each time it starts up, which means, yes, it will be erased if you turn it off, but it will do it again when you start it, uh, turn it on with the, with the program that I wrote. So you don't have to worry about anything. Nothing will be permanently on your ESP32, and you can program it with Arduino software. Really easy. So I wanted to turn off, uh, I wanted I don't want it to turn on anymore, so I just turn off the power and we go back. You can see the light is still there, but it doesn't turn on anymore. See, nothing happens. I can work here, nothing happens. We go back, I turn it on, it turns on again. Which is quite nice. So what I will do is the code will be down in the description. And over here, of course, you want a filter. Yeah, this this circuit is a little bit. The final code is not on here yet. So if you turn it, if you see it turning on and off, it's because it's not the completely final code. The final code will be in the description. Uh, but this is pretty cool. Uh, you can obviously also control it using a phone. And this is just glitching out a little bit because you know this one is pointed down. You know, you know it's pointed down, and the code is not completely optimized yet. Don't worry about that. Um, but this is pretty cool, I thought, so I hope you guys enjoy this, you know, you can make all kinds of stuff with ESP32, so links is in the description to buy it, uh, if you want to, you know, it has not been requested to make this video, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit too grateful maybe, but, um, we'll see you guys in the next video, so, bye guys!